वेलकम एवरी वन एंड नो द टॉपिक ऑफ द डिस्कशन इज द केमिकल यील्ड और रिएक्शन यील्ड यू कैन ऑल्सो सी अ सिंपल वर्ड यील्ड इन द बुक्स ऑफ द केमिस्ट्री सो केमिकल यील्ड रिएक्शन यील्ड और सिंपली इट कैन बी कॉल्ड एज यील्ड Now, what is chemical yield or reaction yield? That is basically the amount of product formed in a chemical. reaction so the amount of product which is formed in a chemical reaction that is called as the chemical yield or reaction yield now <clears throat> when we say that amount of product formed in a chemical reaction this formation may be either theoretical or this may be actual or practical now what is theoretical yield theoretical yield is the yield which is calculated from balanced chemical equation what is theoretical yield it is amount of product formed in a chemical reaction but this chemical reaction is not performed in the laboratory but we just write down a balanced chemical equation or a balanced chemical reaction and we calculate the amount of product from it that yield is called as the theoretical yield theoretical yield is also called as the ideal yield or it may also be called as the maximum yield <clears throat> let us take an example suppose that carbon is made to react with oxygen and we get carbon dioxide gas now suppose if we have 12 grams of carbon and we have 32 grams of oxygen then if we have 12 gram of carbon and 32 gram of oxygen what maximum quantity of the co2 can be prepared that is 44 gram so when we have 12 gram of carbon and 32 gram of oxygen maximum of 44 gram of the co2 can be produced this 42 gram is actually theoretical yield means it is calculated theoretically by using the balanced chemical equation and when we have 12 gram of carbon and 32 gram of oxygen maximum 44 gram of carbon dioxide can be produced so it is the ideal yield or it is the maximum yield now what is actual yield it is amount of product formed in a chemical reaction when reaction is performed practically or experimentally
एक्चुअल यील्ड इज द यील्ड इज द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोडक्ट दैट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड वेन वी कैरी आउट अ केमिकल रिएक्शन इन द लैब सपोज डेट we are given 12 gram of carbon and 32 gram of oxygen and we move to the laboratory we make them react with each other now what the actual product of the co2 actual quantity of the co2 will be obtained that will be called as the actual yield or it will be called as the practical yield or it may also be called as the experimental yield so theoretical yield is simply the calculated yield from the balanced chemical equation but actual yield is the yield which is produced practically during any reaction when we are carrying out this reaction in the laboratory or in the industry let me give you an example that you are giving some exam and the total marks in the exams they are 100 and you say i will get 100 out of 100 this yield is actually the theoretical yield you haven't given the exams but before exams you are in your fantasy is that i will get 100 out of 100 so this 100 out of 100 that is the theoretical yield you can net you can never say that i will get 102 marks out of 100 because you know the maximum marks are 100 so you can get maximum 100 out of it that is the maximum yield that is the theoretical yield that is the ideal yield it will be ideal case that you will be getting 100 marks out of 100 but when you actually take the exam after exams the result is announced and now you get 70 marks out of 100 now this 70 is actually actual yield it is the practical yield because now you have practically performed the examination and after examination now the result is announced that yield is your actual yield that is your practical yield so theoretical yield is just a name of the fantasy it is simply the stoichiometric yield which is calculated from the balanced chemical equation now as i have said that theoretical yield is ideal yield or maximum yield so you can say that theoretical yield is always greater than actual yield but what are the factors that make actual yield lesser than the theoretical yield so there are certain factors that we are going to discuss for example the first factor is inexperienced worker whenever the inexperienced man is working he has many shortcomings and an inexperienced worker makes the wastage of reactants and products due to which the actual yield is always decreased even if an inexperienced worker moves to kitchen he wastes the reactants he wastes the products he wastes the things in the kitchen so that always reduces the actual yield <clears throat> so first reason is the shortcomings of the inexperienced worker now the second reason is sometimes the reactions are reversible and you know in case of a reversible reaction the ultimate goal is to achieve the dynamic equilibrium all the reactants are never changed into the product so how can you get maximum quantity of the product so in case of reversible reaction the products are again changed into the reactants this decreases the yield third reason is the side reaction sometimes you start a reaction and an unwanted reaction also starts with it so some of the reactants are used in that unwanted reaction and this decreases your yield suppose that a person is well experienced he manages things very well he has no shortcomings so the first factor is eliminated no 
द रिएक्शन डेट वी आर परफॉर्मिंग डेट इज बेसिकली इन रिवर्सिबल रिएक्शन इट इज नॉट अ रिवर्सिबल रिएक्शन सो द सेकेंड फैक्टर डेट वॉज रिड्यूसिंग द एक्चुअल यूल्ड इट इज ऑल्सो एलिमिनेटेड नो सपोज वी कैरी आउट अ रिएक्शन एंड देर इज नो अनवॉन्टेड रिएक्शन अलॉन्ग विद इट एंड नो बाय प्रोडक्ट्स आर अनवॉन्टेड प्रोडक्ट्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड but a single reaction that we are carrying out it only takes place then this point is also eliminated now when all these three points are able eliminated now we must get equal now the actual yield must be equal to the theoretical yield because these three possibilities are ruled out so the theoretical yield must be equal to actual yield now but even now the theoretical yield is not actual yield is not equal to the theoretical yield because no another factor operates and this is a factor which will operate and reduce it will reduce the actual yield that is the mechanical loss Sometimes the mechanical loss. This is called as unavoidable loss. If you have all these three points clear, then this fourth point will work, and actual yield will be less than theoretical yield at any cost. Mechanical loss due to separation techniques, and these separation techniques include. filtration it includes crystallization it includes distillation and so on there is a long list of it so if person is experienced no side reaction the reaction is irreversible then this one is the mechanical loss and it is also called as the unavoidable loss these separation techniques are commonly used almost in every reaction that we are carrying out practically so this fourth point will decrease the actual yield because you cannot prevent this loss this is unavoidable loss you cannot prevent it so actual yield will be less than theoretical yield <clears throat> sometimes another factor is there that the apparatus with which we are working that is Faulty, and this also reduces the actual yield. Sometimes the spills and leakages they reduce the actual yield. So there are so many factors, there are so many problems that we encounter when we actually perform a reaction in the lab or in the industry. And when we are performing calculations using a balanced chemical equation, all these points are out of out of our consideration. we are not thinking that the reaction may be reversible we are not thinking that the person who will carry out this reaction in the lab he may be an inexperienced person that's why in the theoretical yield all these points are eliminated and we get 100% result but actually when we move to the ground and we perform the reaction then the case is very different we have to face many problems and some of those problems are that those one that are even beyond our imagination so that's why the actual yield is always less than the theoretical yield. even if i say that actual yield is usually less than theoretical yield this sentence is also ambiguous it is also wrong because actual yield is always less than theoretical yield no when there are two types of the yield now the question is in which yield a chemist is interested a chemist is interested in theoretical yield or he is interested in the actual yield so a chemist is interested in both in the form of percentage yield and percentage yield is equal to actual yield over theoretical yield multiplied by 100 it is just like you calculate percentage of your obtained marks that percentage is equal to marks obtained divided by total marks multiplied by 100 same is the case here percentage yield is equal to actually produced product 
डिवाइडेड बाय द प्रोडक्ट क्वांटिटी ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट दैट वाज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय बैलेंस केमिकल इक्वेशन थ्योरेटिकल गेन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 100 सपोज दैट देयर इज एन एमसीक्यू दैट परसेंटेज गेन थ्योरेटिकल गेन एक्चुअल गेन all of this and the question is a chemist is interested in so a chemist is interested in percentage yield because when we deal with the percentage yield these two yields are automatically covered so a chemist is always interested in the percentage yield now a second mcq out of this the first was a chemist is interested in the right option is alpha the second question is efficiency of a reaction or efficiency of a process is shown by or is expressed by so again the answer is alpha the efficiency of a reaction is also expressed by the percentage yield and even sometimes the question is asked from the formula of the percentage yield so you must keep all these points in your mind <coughs> this was all about the chemical yield or the reaction yield topic and it covers the definition of yield the types of yield then what is the difference between theoretical and actual yield then named that yield in which the chemist is interested or which is used to show the efficiency of a chemical reaction and what is the formula of that yield that was all about the topic of the yield thank you so much allah bless